All right, welcome back. Deal a little bit more now with the requirements of a title company. Okay, so there are some strict rules about forming a title company. And obviously, one of the main rules is it has to be well funded, it has to have capital stock. So, any title company or any business engaged in this chapter, which obviously would be a title company, has to have capital stock of at least $100,000 that has to be fully paid in. So there has to be $100,000 of capital stock before the company can even begin, okay? Now, in order to be authorized by the state to write insurance, a company has to show the Department of Insurance, we call that the DOI, by a sworn statement verified by oaths of the president or the vice president, has to be someone of power. Usually it's the highest ranking official, um, bearing that the corporate seal of the company, that they will comply with all of the requirements of this chapter, as well as any of the sections of section seven. Remember this is uh, IC 27-7, section seven is insurance. So it basically there is a sworn statement stating that these officers and the company under oath that they will follow all of the rules that they are supposed to. Upon receipt of that uh, verification of compliance, the commissioner of the insurance or the commissioner of the DOI will issue a certificate authorizing the company to be able to begin work, okay? Uh, and the certificate is expires at April the 30th of each calendar year. So every year, basically, here's what how it works. The president says, yes, I swear and authorize that we will work by the laws of the Indiana Department of Insurance. And they get that authorized. They turn that form in. That form has to be uh, accepted by the commissioner. And then the commissioner will allow them to work writing title insurance, okay? And it's a one-year certificate. It applies every April the 30th. It expires April the 30th. So they work on May 1 to April 30th is their year. Now, one of the other things that the company has to do of this chapter, if they engage in business, uh, they shall deposit the sum of $50,000 either out of capital or other items uh, in the Indiana title insurance fund. So they've got to pay into this fund a minimum of 50 grand. And every company that does this will eventually, when they renew their license, they will pay more money into the fund. Now, once they are already in practice, and it's much like this for the real estate school, but once a title company is in practice, uh, they have to fund at least 10% of the actual premiums collected that previous year, or $50,000, okay? So they have to fund 10% of whatever they collect, or $50,000. That's uh, one of the other things. Now, the fund is maintained by the treasury uh, of the company, and they actually mean uh, our company or the title company, and it's the option of the reserve fund in multiples of $10,000. So you've got to do it in multiples of $10,000. Uh, and we deposit that with the insurance department of insurance, okay? Now, if there becomes an amount that's deficient in our reserve and we fall below what is required, uh, we have to actually stop, and I keep saying we, and when I say we, I, I want you to mean a, understand a title company. Uh, the title company can no longer issue title insurance if they fall below the minimum requirement of reserves. 
Now, uh, if they do, they can actually read, you know, put more money in the reserves. And once the money in the reserves becomes sufficiently covers their 10% or 50 grand, then they can go back working again. So they don't ever want to fall below that requirement amount. Okay. Uh, the Department of Insurance shall permit such companies having a deposit with the stocks or bonds as security to collect interest. So if our money is put uh, earmarked that's in somewhere else, we can actually earn interest in that uh, money. So we can earmark, you know, 50 grand, but we may have it in some kind of financial vehicle. We can earn interest in it. Now, the Department of Insurance can examine any of the documents for any company doing business in Indiana. When we authorize that we will be following the rules, one of the rules is that gives the DOI the, apart, the ability to come in and audit our records anytime they want. Now, when it's required, the officers have to produce the books and the papers uh, and facilitate in the aid of the examination. So get this, I, I love this. This is the same as the school. Uh, it's the same as any real estate brokerage. If you are decided, have, they have decided to audit you, the lack of helping them audit you is actually a violation in and of itself. <laughs> get that, right? So basically, you've got to help hang yourself. That's how I look at it. Um, now, every year, title companies doing business in Indiana must file a financial statement before March 15th for the previous year. Now, they want that filing, and here's where it gets confusing, because the DOI works on a May to April for your license, but you actually have to file a financial statement for a calendar year. And it's got to show where the 10% of premiums have been duly set apart, and that you help title and that you had in your insurance reserve fund. So you have to have a line item called insurance reserve fund and you put 10% of whatever you've collected in there. The ver once again, that's also is just like all the other documents. It has to be verified under oath that it's true and correct. All right. Um, we're going to switch topics there. 